Okay, today is Monday, the 21st of October 2019. I'm here at the office of a very illustrious gentleman. He is the principal of Echoes Village Anglican School and he's going to reveal his role in this school many assumed duties and the progress that the school has made. So he's going now to reveal his personality. And your name is, sir? Good day, everyone. My name is Roger Deepert, principal of the Echo Village American Primary School. As Mr. Sarup said, I'm in very flattering terms. I would not go as far to say that. Illustrious, but thank you, Mr. Sarup. I would have assumed duties here at this school in April of 2016, just three years ago. Prior to that, I would have been the principal of the Tableland American Primary School. So I've been a principal for just about 11 years, starting in 2008. Right? At the Echo Village American School, we have a co-educational institution, boys and girls. At present, we have a population of 157, 88 boys and well, the rest in girls. I can't do the math in my head at the moment, but please excuse me. Um, we have a staff of nine teachers, four ancillary, meaning janitorial staff, one clerical, and four OJTs. We have um, the OJTs, one being librarian, two teaching assistants, and one clerical assistant. That's the staff in the school. Okay, can you, um, is it possible to remember their names now? The teachers, for instance, yeah. the vice principal, yeah. starting with the vice principal in descending order? Sure. Yeah. Well, at the education system in Trinidad, we, we don't have a vice principal because of the numbers. A school with 400 plus would have a vice principal. So what we have what is called a senior teacher. Our acting senior teacher is Ms. Cheryl, Mrs. Cheryl Ash, followed by Mrs. Diane Callum, Ms. Erica Charles, um, Ms. Hema Thackeray Duki, Dixie Ann Hunt Blackman, Belinda George, Laverne Langley, uh, Necker James, or Moose Jr., and Ms. Darcel Dreams. That's the teaching staff. You want the rest as well? Well, okay, yes, the manipulative staff, or what we call Okay, the ancillary staff, we have four female janitorial staff. We have Ms. Sherry Ann Batiste, Sherry Pascal, uh, Ms. Oh, oh, her name escapes, Michelle Alibi and Ms. Glenda Francis, right? Or uh, Business Operations Assistant, or clerical officer, Mrs. Christabel Rajkumar Ragubar, four OJTs in the names of Usha Mangal, Pamela Ramdani, um, Georgiana Elborn, and Shania Augustus. Okay, um, you, you talk about business management, Somebody is heading the business management. Business operations. Operation. But what's the purpose of that? Okay. Yeah. As I said, it's like a clerical, it's a clerical, it's a clerical officer. That's the term given to you by the government now, business operations assistant. They assist in the day-to-day -day running and duties, clerical work of the school. They would assist the teachers in, in, in the copying and, and clerical work and so on. And they're primarily here to assist in the day-to-day -day running. Right? Data, data management, forwarding of data to the Ministry of Education and whatnot. Okay. okay um, can you disclose the academic success of this school since you assume, or the progress of the school, what it was before you assumed duties, mm -hmm. and what the educational ascendancy, mm -hmm. or the progress is, to put it mildly. Um, having assumed duties in 2016, I will go as far to say this. When I came and I saw the dedication and commitment of the teaching staff, with absolutely no hesitation, I brought my own children here with me. Because I had utmost confidence that the, the, their methods, their commitment, as I said, was exactly what I would have want, what I want for my own children. And I believe that what I want 
if I want something for my own children, it will transcend onto those other charges that we have here. In terms of academic proficiency, our school, when national test was in existence, which would have been done in standards one and three, for those years, we were always in the excelling bar. There are three bars where you're under academic watch, um, just about making it, doing well and excelling. I can't remember the exact name. Oh, can I there. stop you there for a while, sure. please, for some plan. Is, is that You're speaking about before the period prior you were here? Yes. So yeah. that um, you took over from a well-established standard. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Yes. And you continue. I have tried my endeavor best to have it continue. And I'm proud to say that it has. Okay? For the last three years, 2016 to 2019, none of our children in the SEA fell under the fell under 30%. Right? And that's a benchmark that the ministry uses to determine when children are underperforming. None so of that, our children have okay. fallen under that. So that what you're telling me now, mm -hmm. you're coming to this school, um, the standard has risen? I would say so. I would say okay, so. Okay, but what was it before in terms of the 30%? Um, I would rather not reveal that for to me because it would be unfair and unjust me to, to, to tell you that what it, children have been under 30% then, right? No, but not And I have not really done any investigation to see how many would have fallen under the 30%, okay? And it wasn't too monitored in back in those days either. When I say those days, even. 2014, 2015. I will speak for when I'm here. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to comment too much on when we're back. From 2016 to 2019, progressively every year, our children have risen. Our analysis of the re results have revealed students are falling in higher percentile ranks every year. This year, we had four students falling in the 96th percentile, meaning they would have beaten 96% of the country in terms of their SEA marks. That's four. This year would have been four out of 18 children who would, right? The rest, the majority of them, everybody fell about 50%. One student fell between the 40 to 50% bracket, okay? It's a fair achievement, I would say. It was an improvement from 2018 and 2017. 2018, we had two students in the 94th percentile. And in 2016, we had two students again in the 90th percentile. So it has been progressive, improving gradually. We have found that our weakest area would have been creative writing. We have taken steps to, to improve that by having a joint workshop most recently with two other schools. And our teachers, entire staff was involved and they benefited tremendously. And when I do my class checks and my, my clinical supervision, I'm seeing the implementation of, of the strategies that would have been taught at that workshop. All right? So, um, as I said, I don't want to go too much back into when I was not here and divulge information about how it would have improved, but I can speak from 2016 to 2019, we have improved incrementally. Okay. The question here is now, um, well, implicit in that um, disclosure, mm -hmm. what you're saying that, um, in fact, to, to put it short, there was a marked improvement since you took over the school. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, it's good. It is, it's, it's I understand what you're asking. You see, there may be a lot of reasons for that. I yeah, always but, like to say that self-praise is no praise. I don't want to say it is because of my stewardship here that it would have improved. I would rather let somebody else say that, okay, this is what Mr. Biko did. I am saying what has happened between 2016 to 2019. There have been improvements. If, if someone else wants to credit me for the, the, the improvement in performance, well, so be it. But I personally will definitely credit the hard work of my staff. They have given 150, 50% always in academics and any other areas that I ask them um, for. Okay, you might have posed the, the rule, the student rule. Mm -hmm. And um, would, you, would you believe that um, the punctuality and regularity contributed towards the, the improvement, the progress that you have now achieved in the school? What do you think? Of students, you mean? Yes. yes. Um, punctuality and regularity is always mm -hmm. crucial, critical. 
for the success of any student. You need to be regular. Punctuality, we could give a little leeway because sometimes extenuating circumstances may arise and you reach a little late for the school. But we don't have a major problem with that. All right? The majority of students arrive to school here in time to begin their academics. They don't miss out much on academics. I must confess, though, that we do have a couple of students. We have a regularity problem with them. And it might be surprising to know that the students are intelligent students. I make no apologies in saying that I hold parents responsible for that. We have spoken to the parents on numerous occasions. We have even taken steps to have them refer to the social worker who is taking that matter up with the parents because there's only so much we as a school and as a staff can do. Right? We encourage you. And if the children are well behaved, they are intelligent, they work well, it's now left up to the parents to get their children to school. The Ministry of Education provides them with meals. We do, unfortunately, we don't have the maxi service here, but I don't think that's a critical factor in them not coming. Right? I, I, I'm going to stop short of, <laughs> of saying any reasons, but it's the parents to, to, to take that initiative and get your children here to school. The Ministry is doing its utmost best to provide you with everything. Okay? We at Echo Village put out, we, we, we don't there are no fees to pay. We have free education in Trinidad. So I, I'm, I'm really hoping that the parents see this message and get their children to school because education is the key to the future. It will open doors for your children. Please make that effort and get your children to school. People in general listening to this message. Be regular to your school. Teachers are trying their best. Please, you do that extra mile. Okay, well, okay, there another aspect of it which I'd like to delve with for a moment. Um, is there, uh, what extra does the school do to improve education? Do you all give extra lessons to students? Mm -hmm. is, was it, is it on a voluntary basis? Or was it, how is it done if it is done at all? The word extra lessons is a very ticklish term, okay? Yes, we do. I myself personally stay back on evenings at times and work with students at the standard five level and sometimes the standard four. The teachers here come in early on mornings and give their extra lessons. I hasten to add that it's all voluntary. No, absolutely no fees are charged for these lessons. And I will also add that not all students avail themselves to those lessons. All right, we try because the curriculum sometimes is interrupted by sometimes factors like most recently we had a day off for weather. Sometimes we have days off for public holidays, electrical outages, and we lose some teaching time regarding these things. And so we need to make up. Not all children learn at the same pace, unfortunately. It would be wonderful if everybody, as you taught something in picked it up instantly. So with that extra lessons is really targeted for those students who aren't able to keep up with the normal pace of during the school day. It's not about um, a, it's not a money making venture. It's not about trying to top the SEA. It's about trying to assist the students who just sometimes need that little extra boost and help to keep up with the regular pace of the classroom. SEA is a, is a packed curriculum, I would say. There's a new format that requires a lot of critical thinking. It's a total paradigm shift in terms of that, with that, uh, that exam now. And students have to be prepared. Have to, have to be prepared. I challenge uh, people who would have, there's recently a list put out by the ministry on the top 200. I challenge to say how many of them would have done it without any extra lessons. And only with what would have been done in the half past eight to three. Just to say how many of them would have done any extra lessons. Because I, I, I'm telling you, it's needed. It's needed. Okay. Those st students who have not availed themselves of extra lessons, how do they fare in the examination? I can only answer that question at the end of this exam. Um, prior to that, uh, the students, 
when any teachers would have given any extra lessons, they would have come. How they fail the exams, um, of course, they would not have been at the top of the class. They weren't too, they weren't very low down in the order, but they were not at the top of the class. I would also add that some of them, some of them went on their own and paid to get that extra lessons. Eh? They just did not avail themselves of the free lessons here. They would have gone on the outside and would have spent their fees to avail themselves of extra lessons. And that's the end. It's up to the, in the end. It's up to the parents' choice, right? Uh, it, 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 the extra lessons helps. It, it's, not, it's not going to work any miracles to say that because of the extra lessons you are going to be tremendously successful, but it does help and it does supplement what is done during the day in the class. Okay. Um, another question is, um, well, long ago we had common entrance. It's mm -hmm. not lo no longer common entrance, yes, is it? Yeah. Okay, but who is responsible principally of coaching these children, tutoring them, teaching them? Mm -hmm. Is there a special teacher or a special class? No, there is no one special teacher. Every teacher in a primary school is supposed to be capable of delivering the curriculum at any level. However, there are some teachers who prefer the higher levels, and there are some who totally don't. As with any job, there, was, there are some who are going to have their likes and dislike for certain tasks that they are assigned to do. But the ministry, in the, in the eyes of the ministry, every teacher is supposed to teach any level. But at present, we have two teachers. They take the students from both standard four and five for those two formative years, and they have no qualms in doing it. They enjoy the level and they enjoy what they do. But and under my stewardship, I'm going to rotate because I have a sort of succession plan because we never know. Teachers get promoted, teachers retire. So we need to have things in place for succession so that you, you don't wait till one is ready to retire, one is ready to move. You have everyone being groomed to teach at that higher level as well. So I'm not going to single out any one teacher. Okay, I might assume that um, these two teachers who are assigned to this uh, these classes or this class, mm -hmm. um, are they senior teachers? One is a senior. One is a senior teacher at the school, not a third senior teacher, and the other is actually one of the more junior ones, right? Um, she would have started in the teaching profession just in about 2008, 2009, thereabout, but she has demonstrated true commitment, true dedication, and she really gives her all. I even had to say that my daughter is in her class. Right? Mm -hmm. I had that confidence in her that she would do a great job. And 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 it's the first time she's at the standard four or five level. And she's doing a remarkable job. Are there two classes? So yes. Well, yeah, there's a standard four and a standard five. No, one at each level. Okay. One one is what that one is a preparatory um... Well we go from standards one to standard five. So right now we have Students in standard four. Standard four is the real formative years of the SD exam. The majority of teaching and so preparation that, for the exam occurs in that standard four. Okay. If I'm if I understand you correctly. So the standard four class is a is a, a pre preparatory class for all standard. classes are. All no, classes I'm, I'm prepare about, you for SDA. There are two there are two teachers, right? Well, well but, okay, ex let me explain it to you. We have seven levels at the primary mm -hmm. school. First year, second year, standards one to five. That's seven, seven levels, all right? And there's a teacher to every level. At Apple Village, we have one. We have two standard threes, but all the rest of classes, we have one. So mm -hmm. when I say two teachers, because the, a teacher would hold the class for four and five. So the standard four teacher will move up to standard five, right? The standard five teacher presently was with them in standard four. So they would have, they would have had the children for two years. That's why I would have singled out those two teachers because they go four or five. Okay, okay. So that the the standard five mm -hmm. class, it, that teacher is um, fully occupied in teaching the um, the exam, preparing the student for the examination. That yes, the teacher curriculum. I wouldn't say just preparing them for exams because as much as we have the SEA, yes, 
there are other subjects on the curriculum that are not tested by the SEA, and those subjects are still done. We have the social studies, we have the science, we have the VAPA, all right? They are still done at the standard five. Well, it would be very nice of you if you tell me, identify those two teachers. Um, without their consent, I don't want to mention their names. Sir. Okay. <laughs> it would be an honor yeah. for them and also... Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I must... Well, uh, another aspect of it, this is on the teaching side, right? But you have no problem with your teachers on this. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But the students, you have said that they, they are well behaved, the students. Yes. Well disciplined. Now let's go in the sporting arena. We are now, we have finished the academic. What is the sporting arena? Um, At the village Anglican boasts a rich, a rich, filthy rich participation mm. in sports. Let me begin with athletics. Let's start with March past. At the Village Anglican School has been victorious in the Victoria Education District March Pass competition consecutively for the last seven years. We have represented Victoria at National Primary Games in Port Spain for the last seven years. I dare say we are untouchable. Prove me wrong. Um, this year, most recently, we would have participated in football. We would have done netball, but football is our strongest point. Um, we would have done chess, we would have done table tennis, okay? But our strongest point is in athletics, right? I myself am the public relations officer for the Victoria Education District Sports Association, the overarching body that oversees all sporting disciplines in Victoria. And my school participates fully in all these events. If you can just glance across there, you'll see all the trophies that we boast of. Oh, those are... Um... Yes, some. Those are some of the trophies okay. that we would have received in marching and in other areas. But this is during your period of... Um, yes, Georgia. I would say yes, three of them there are I, I, I don't know if you can step... Um, if you can into the, step into aside... The picture, into the frame. Yes, and just identify which... Okay, this is the tallest one at the back. Yeah. The, we have won that for the last two years, that, that, having won that, our Victoria this, District. This there, yes. yeah, that's the tallest Lindsay Popol trophy. Oh, that one there. Yes. This large one, we won it three years consecutively, so it's ours to keep. It was a challenge trophy okay. for Victoria. We won it for the last three years, 2016 to 2019. Sorry, 2014 to 2017. Mm -hmm. So it's ours to keep, right? This one we would have won for the last two years, 2018 to 2019. All right. Um, the others are for athletics. This one will be, these are more for Sandfest, another aspect, and you didn't ask about that. There you can see some newspaper articles. Mm -hmm. That's our school march pass team there celebrating. Okay. Can you bring it up? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Well, can you amplify on that, please? What, what you know, okay no what can you describe what, what it was for? okay this would have been the will be our school is part of the Williamsville zone okay and the Williams Williamsville zone would have won the Victoria Education District March Pass competition okay. that particular year okay all right and they would have just been taking their celebratory picture in front of the Be Mobile banner Be Mobile is our sponsor okay. for the Victoria Education okay. District okay. Games proud to have them as our sponsors. Right, and that was just them celebrating. And I can, I will call Miss Erica Charles. She is the teacher of the, that March Pass team. She has been coaching that March Pass team. I'm looking for the at last that, I'm looking at a photograph there. Yeah. What what is that? This yeah. this is the class of 2017, the SDA class of 2017. This this was a picture given to me by one of the students as a okay. as a little gift. Okay. Right, that's Miss Erica Charles. She would have well. You see, I've revealed the name now. This is one of the hard-working standard five teacher she and she's also the march pass coach and also our choir leader our choir mistress teaching okay. the choir very hard-working teacher okay and, and what's she, her name again erica char okay so you finally got it out of me she's a senior teacher she's one of the more senior teachers at the school mm -hmm. yes you got it out of me and well yeah, she's my fourth one of the four five teachers and the other is darcel drakes one of the younger 
Now you spoke up. Do you have a coach in the school? Like coach. A coach that a uh, sporting coach at cricket. Most only this year we would have gotten a football coach, right, Mr. Kafra, Kafra Anderson. Okay. We would have taken on his services. He works at the Edinburgh 500 Football Academy. He has agreed and come on board as our football coach, and he has done a remarkable job. He has got me boys to blend together. We won a couple of our games. Unfortunately, we didn't make it onto the quarter, but it's a new team. This is our first year getting the team together. Last year, we weren't able to take part, but this year we got the team together, and we have a team that's about 17 boys in the under 12 age group, and they, they, they performed admirably. And what and about, we're all proud of them. Okay, what about cricket? You have no... no this, unfortunately, I, I don't want to blame it on the students too much, but they, 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 they don't have much interest in cricket. I've tried. We have, a, we have our kids and so on. We've taken part in the kiddie cricket with competition and so on. But into the actual physical game, I've been trying to get students interested in to, to, to take part. And they just, they just love football. They Not play football all year round. Okay, I'm looking at the, the um, situation here in the school. Every, all these, these spaces need to be filled up. So where do they... I'm oh. talking about the, the yard. Yeah. The we backyard. have a, a little backyard. It's okay. not much, but it's a lot more than some schools have. And but, we make ample use of it. Okay. But yeah? It's a paved, you have a covered auditorium and a, a oil sanded little backyard. And the, the, the children use it. You had mentioned chess. Who, mm -hmm. who, um, One of our students, um, I have to credit the parents for that, was coaching their, their student, their, their child, sorry. And we would allow them to take part in the competition. So that, that there is no... Um, we don't have a chess club per se, but um, it's something we're working on. But one student? Yes, yeah, just one student. Yeah. Oh, that he get external help? Yes, he got the help, yeah. Probably domestic help. Yes, that. he would have got the domestic so help. So the school has nothing to do with that? Not, no, no. But yes. he would have represented the school. Okay. <clears throat> Is that the achievement of the school? We, we would put it as, yes. Because he's a student of the school? He's a student of the school and we would have been the ones to take him there and so on okay. for the competition. Okay, for the competition. Yeah. Okay, there is another aspect of it um, I need to speak to you about or well, ask. This school, the compound, is it available to, to, to social groups or so? It, it can be, oh. but proper requests need to be made. The school belongs to the Anglican Education Board of Management mm -hmm. and any requests to use the school must be approved by me first and then I will forward it to them. Also the Ministry of Education must be aware of anything that is occurring on the school's compound. They too would have to give their consent and their approval for any events to be held. But for security purposes and so on, do you all have any sort of um, intrusion in the school? No, no, and so on? no, no. Since my, my stay here, I have never, never ever had loss of any property or equipment. So that's great because we have a very hard working guard provided by Show Security. Miss Marie Bruce, she does a fantastic job. She does a job with pride, integrity and commitment. And I'm very grateful to have us. We call her as one of the staff members. Okay. Well, I have interviewed you sometime before. Yes, you did. And you had mentioned something about your background, mm -hmm. which many people do not know unless they have an access to that interview I did with you. And from what I gathered, you are a very erudite er person. Mm -hmm. Your academic um, achievement reflects that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you now relate something about your background? Your, let's come to your parental background. And, uh, I mean, uh, that's big. Well, my father was a, both parents are deceased. My father was an Anglican priest. His last uh, tenure as a sitting parish priest would have been at the St. Thomas Parish in Chabonas. And then he would have retired and assisted other priests. Oh, you forgot his name. Oh, Reverend Clifford James Lippert, mm -hmm. right? He would have passed away in 1992. Mm -hmm. He would have been an Anglican priest. My mother would have been a Presbyterian, right? Miss Angelina, formerly Ganga Singh. Her father, ironically, was a Presbyterian minister as well. Mm -hmm. Mr. Do um, Reverend Dorcas Ganga Singh, right? Um, so, sorry, Philip Ganga Singh, my mother was Dorcas. Um, a Presbyterian minister. So I come from a... <laughs> let's say a ministerial background for the want of a better word. 
I have been an Anglican all my life. I currently attend the St. Thomas Anglican Church in Chabonas, of which I am part of the support the communications ministry, assisting in the digital um, presentations at the church. I have married with two children. I have my I completed my diploma in education in 1995 at the Valsin Teachers College. My certificate in education in 2002, my bachelor's in education, both in the teaching of science in 2004, and my master's in education in 2010 in the teaching of curriculum, in delivery of curriculum. So that's as far as I have been with my education. Okay, let's go. Oh, with that Past student of presentation college in Okay, Jonas. and the yeah, elementary school? Element Shibonas government. Okay. I also attended the Shibonas Senior Comprehensive School where I did A-levels. Okay. Another thing about, um, Let's say this will complete the. Um, there are a lot of religious activities in the community, right? Mm -hmm. Like Hindus will have the body, Muslim Eid, mm -hmm. and the Christian holidays, and so on. Now, do you does the school take part to encourage it to, you know, mm -hmm. support? <laughs> because they are, these are holidays, mm -hmm. what, to what extent do you all contribute, the school contribute? When it comes now, we are an Anglican school, yeah. alright? So basically we would deliver the Anglican education mm -hmm. religious syllabus. Mm -hmm. It's not forced on anyone because it's illegal to do such, but that's the curriculum we deliver. For other religious activities, I open it up to the parents. I would I ask the parents of the Hindu faith or the Muslim faith, mm -hmm. as the case may be, to come in and they can do some. They are free to do whatever they want to promote and, and educate, I would want to say, the other students on what Diwali and what Hindu Fitir um, pertains to. Because we ourselves, unto Akura, we would do it in the social studies, yes, but I do allow parents to come in to. But what is their response? Unfortunately, not too great. Not too great. Um, I would really want more, but it's not what I would have ex expected at the moment. Right now, we have Diwali coming up, which is next week. I've been asking some of the parents to come in. Some of them have given some responses. I'm having a meeting with them tomorrow to discuss what it is they're going to do, and we'll see how it goes there. But we, I have got a favorable response this year, a lot better than the years before. And I'm trying to encourage it. We are a multicultural society and, you know, all embracing. Okay. Well, this is, I'm speaking here to Mr. Raja Bhupat. Mr. Raja Bhupat, can I ask you another question? Yes, sir. Um, with your career in here? I don't think so. I don't think so. But then again, it's all in God's hands. We don't know if you'll wake up tomorrow. Well, so what, you is, here, what is your what, um, my, in terms well, of my ambitions? Yeah. If that's what you're asking. No, well, I, I think uh, that was implied. Yes. The, the question <laughs> is, here means occupying the position of principal of the mm -hmm. school. Yeah. Do you have any ambition at all to go further? Yes. Yes. Right now, my, both of my children are in primary school. At the end of their primary school career, God willing, I mm -hmm. may probably use look towards a promotion and within the education system the only promotion we can really get from here is either into supervision or curriculum both pique my interest at this point so i don't want to say definitely i'll be going which way but at this point i'm just trying to see my children out through their primary school education well we are almost at the end of this interview and i must commend you for being so expressive and um revealing what you are doing to this mm -hmm. school, probably unknown to other people, yeah. for the benefit of the school sorry, and for the benefit of the community. And I wish you the best in your future endeavors, because you are a man with ambition. You have reached your academic um, success, or so the pinnacle of your academic success is you have a uh, master's Master. in education. Okay? But I think you should be pursuing your doctorate soon. Thank you, sir. Who knows? It may be in the future. Well, I must thank you very much.